Thank you, Dr. Uzi Landau. And uh, now I, want, uh, I would like to warmly welcome Mr. Pierre Lelouch. Uh, he's a current, he's, uh, uh, he has been a member of Parliament, of the French Parliament, since 1993. He's currently a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the French National Assembly and a member of the Paris City Council. Under President Sarkozy, Pierre Lelouch served as French Minister of State for Europe and Minister of State for Foreign Trade. Please give a warm welcome to Pierre Lelouch. Good morning to all and good morning to Minister Landau and to many of my French friends that I see here, particularly David de Rothschild and, and others, and of course to uh, Roger Kukerman and his son, uh, Edward, whom I want to thank for giving me the honor to uh, speak at this uh, important session. It's also a pleasure for me for, for at least two good reasons. The first one is that um, coming back to uh, Israel today is in a way returning to my youth as I came here the first time, for the first time 45 years ago, in 1968. And let me give you a, a confidence, a private confidence, even though we all spied these days. Um, at that time, I was uh, 17 years old, uh, or 18, 17 years old, straight out of uh, high school and the French uh, Paris Revolution. I was, of course, uh, coming from a very modest family. I was then a good uh, socialist. And of course, I was uh, very interested in discovering the true socialism in an uh, Israeli kibbutz. And I find myself in uh, Endor. It was a unique and a remarkable experience in my life in a variety of ways in which I will not dwell this morning. But um, I think 45 years later, and I returned to Indoor when I was a minister a couple of years ago, which was a moving experience. Um, and I guess the lesson of history um, from that trip, original trip, is that, of course, I'm no longer a socialist, but I also discovered that the kibbutznik are no longer socialist either. Um, and that Indoor turned into a very effective high-tech factory producing uh, microchips which uh, is a concentrate in many ways of, uh, of the history uh, Minister Lando was uh, talking about. The, uh, the other reason why I'm happy uh, to be here this morning is that um, for once, I, I think I'm gonna be upbeat this morning um, because thinking about the relationship between Europe and Israel, uh, I believe we are uh, in a phase of mutual, what I would call mutual rediscovery, and perhaps at the door of a new era of renaissance in the relationship between us. And that, I think, is a very good uh, development. 45 years ago, when I first came here, Israel was viewed in Europe as a pioneer state. It was viewed very positively. It was flooded with uh, young people, uh, wanted to discover the success stories that Israel was as a rebirth of the Jewish people. But that image, as you all know, was uh, later profoundly damaged by uh, the turn of events. The new generations born in Europe, especially after the 1973 wars, not only lost the moral dimension of Europe-Israeli uh, history, namely the Shoah, this European crime which led to the destruction of Jews in Europe and the creation of Israel. But it also turned Israel from the victim to a ruthless occupier. What followed were many difficult years of uh, diabolization uh, of Israel, of distanciation, of mistrust between uh, Europe France included, and, and Israel. In Europe, it became fashionable indeed. Uh, it became the accepted self-evident truth that A, the mother of all the tension in the south 
of the Mediterranean and in the Middle East. The most pregnant threat to world peace was the Arab-Israeli conflict, indeed the Arab-Palestinian dispute, and B, that the main obstacle to the settlement of that situation, and therefore to world peace, was the so-called Israeli quote-unquote intransigence. This background, compounded by the consequences of the 1973 oil shock and the rise of very powerful financial powers in the Gulf, led many European companies at that time to prefer protecting their interests in the Arab world rather than investing in the Israeli economy. As to the Israeli leadership, and over the years I have come to know many of the Israeli prime ministers and leading politicians. As, and during this period, then the Israeli leadership and the public opinion itself came to the conclusion that Europe was lost, definitely lost anyway, and that the only true friend Israel had in the world was, uh, is, uh, was the United States, and all effort had to be made to cultivate the relationship with the United States. Today, uh, while remnants of this past are still being felt, uh, both in Europe and also in Israel, the massive geopolitical changes that have taken place over the last 25 years with the end of the Cold War, the advent of economic globalization, not to speak of the large economic crisis uh, which started a few years ago, all of this have profoundly modified the whole context of European-Israeli relationship. And my conviction is that a window of change, of mutual discovering and trust, is opening before us. In Europe, the somewhat caricatural notion that the only global threat to peace came from the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is giving way to a somewhat more sober appreciation of the complexity of the security threats surrounding Europe as they uh, emerge today before our eyes. Clearly, for instance, the Arab revolutions in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Libya, and other places have little to do with Israel and much more with the central question of reconciling the Arab world as a whole with modern de democratic governance and indeed, more profoundly, reconciling Islam and modernity. The war in Iraq and now the tragic civil war in Syria also are opening a new front within the Muslim world between Shiite and Sunnite. Indeed, uh, Muslim Arabs are now the first victims of terror today as we speak in Syria or in Iraq. Again, this is a great divide within the Muslim world which can hardly be traced to the existence of the State of Israel. The same goes with the ongoing terrorism from the Sahel to Somalia or to the rise of new potential nuclear powers already there, like in Pakistan or tomorrow perhaps in Iran. Europeans are beginning to understand that they too, their cities, their citizens, are potentially vulnerable to nuclear strikes from emerging nuclear powers in the Middle East. In short, ladies and gentlemen, Europeans who are themselves confronted with an era of terrorism and proliferation, with a period of uh, long-term upheaval in their immediate neighborhood, i.e. the southern Mediterranean and the Middle East, are beginning to apprehend the region in all of its complexity. While the Arab-Israeli peace process needs to be revived and brought finally to a peaceful conclusion, it would be hard to find today one serious European leader who would argue, as was done for many years, not so long ago, that if you could fix the Israeli-Palestinian problem, you would automatically solve all of the threats surrounding us. The French forces now fighting in Mali certainly can testify to this, and I'm in charge of Mali in the French parliament. The resumption of uh, security cooper cooperation with Israel, the strong stand taken by France on the Iranian nuclear question, 
are also significant developments in that direction. In parallel, the combination of globalization and economic crisis in Europe is also leading to a new appraisal of Israelis' Im impressive achievement in the field of economic performance, particularly in the high-tech sector. Continued growth at 3-4% rates, despite the continuing crisis in the West, is indeed inviolable uh, when uh, viewed from Europe. So is the impressive R&D ratio achieved here, with more than 4.5% of the GDP devoted to innovation, major success in the high-tech sectors, leading Israeli companies now in, uh, in the world, like Teva, for example, not to speak of the discovery of uh, major gas assets, are turning Israel as, uh, into a very uh, a tempting, important player in the economic uh, situation. And for many in Europe, uh, particularly when we look at the way uh, research, universities, and startups and industries are fully integrated here as a sort of super Silicon Valley model, these kinds of things are looked at with somewhat uh, uh, envy in, uh, in Europe and certainly in my country when we have great difficulty particularly to integrate uh, research industry and uh, universities. Books such as the one uh, published by uh, Edouard Kukerman with Professor Daniel Roche uh, presenting uh, Israeli technological achievement are also helping in changing the image of Israel in, uh, in my country and throughout the European continent. But uh, the rediscovery at work in Europe is also taking place, I believe, uh, in Israel itself. Israelis are pragmatic and they understand facts. Half of Israeli trade is now done with Europe and the 1995 free trade agreement with the EU, which needs to be upgraded, is indeed of strategic importance for Israel. Second, the notion uh, first presented by uh, France in 1978 and which has long been the EU position, namely that the Palestinian issue had to be resolved by a two-state peace settlement, is now being broadly supported by a majority of Israeli citizens as well as a majority of Israeli political parties. Clearly, clearly the time is ripe for a settlement of this peace process. The uh, Arab countries are tired with this uh, situation. And I believe this uh, uh, particular point in history, even though it is very complex, clearly shows a potential for rapid solution. We, uh, in any case, support strongly the efforts of the United States and welcome the return of the United States in the peace process. And personally, I, I support and welcome the decision taken today by Prime Minister Netanyahu, and I know it was not an easy decision to go on with the liberation of uh, prisoners as part of this uh, pro uh, process. Parenthetically, if I may uh, uh, intervene in Israeli domestic affairs, but giving you at least uh, my experience on this, where Israel to adopt a different electoral system that is not a proportional but a majority system, you would probably manage to build much stronger government majorities which will allow Israel to progress much further in the peace settlement. 